Welcome to the fourth episode of the RP1 series. The first thing I'm going to do is launch this rocket right here. Now this rocket is just meant to complete another film return contract. So I'm going to launch it. And I'm going to wait until we kind of get high enough to actually do some science. So we're going to release. And just warp all the way back down to the ocean for reentry. And now we're getting ready for an aero launch. Now you're going to see that this plane doesn't actually have any jet engines, it only has the rocket engine. And that's because I wanted to do more high altitude contracts and jet engines don't really work at high altitudes. This contract wants us to get all the way to 40 kilometers, so I'm going to pitch up and fire up those rocket engines. Once our apoapse reaches 40 kilometers, I'm going to cut it off and glide all the way there. Here we are at apoapse, and you can see that we're really close to space. We're like, you know, you can't see any sky above us. And I was really skeptical about this craft returning. I thought the G-Force might just like destroy it, but luckily it was fine and we were able to glide back to the Space Center. And the landing was a bit bumpy and it actually broke our front landing gear, but luckily for some reason when your front landing gear breaks you don't spin out and crash. Looks like we got a decent amount of cash from the contracts we just completed. So now I'm going to take this money and I'm actually going to spend some upgrade points before we do our next launch. I'm going to put them into both R&D and VAB. And then I'm going to get ready to air launch our next craft. I think we're going to be 250 kilometers out. I think that's enough distance. So here we are on the runway. I'm going to get ready for launch, turn on SAS. I'm going to pull up the gear and then I'm going to pitch up and fire up the engines. This mission, we have an altitude goal of 60 kilometers, which is the highest we've ever been. So we're gonna pitch up crazy high, and then we're just gonna keep burning until we're pretty much out of the atmosphere. By the time we cut off our engines, our apoapse was actually closer to 65 kilometers. I was really worried about this re-entry, but luckily the craft took it just fine. Then I started gliding back to the Space Center, slowly bleeding off speed and altitude. And luckily 250 kilometers was the perfect distance because we pretty much got to the Space Center at a pretty good speed without having to do a bunch of S-bends or anything. And just a few days later, we're ready for another air launch. So we're gonna go 250 kilometers again. We're gonna pull, actually we got some weird terrain clipping issues here. It's kind of funny. Anyways, we're gonna Fire up that rocket engine, and it's not gonna light. Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell no. Looks like this mission's gonna be a failure, so I just coasted down to the ocean, slowly bleeding off speed. And once we were at a safe altitude, I actually pitched up to stall out the plane when we deploy our parachutes. This meant that there was no chance of our wings being broken off by some weird forces. And then we just splash down gently in the water. And you can see that that rocket engine was broken again. All right, I just wanted to show kind of where we are right now. So this craft is gonna take about 40 days to build, and this one's gonna take about 70. Together, that's 110 days. Now I wanna start building my orbital rocketry as soon as possible, right after those two crafts have been launched. Unfortunately, we won't have our orbital rocketry researched until 135 days, leaving about 25 days where nothing's gonna be happening. To solve this, I'm gonna just put some more points in the R&D, but that's really not gonna make up the difference. There's just gonna be a few days where we're just kind of sitting around waiting for orbital rocketry to finish. But we are gonna hopefully be able to launch our first orbital rocket in 1956. Here we are on the launch pad again, and this craft has no scientific payload. It's just some of the new avionics that I'm going to be using from this point on. And 
these avionics actually let us control the craft and control the gimbal of the engine, which is way better than the old avionics, which was literally just, you can activate stuff or deactivate stuff, real simple. So I'm gonna guide this rocket up, and then we're just gonna warp all the way back down. There's no payload to release. It's literally just a test of the avionics. Funnily enough, this big fuel tank actually survived re-entry, so I'm just gonna warp all the way down until it smashes into the water. I know I just said that I was gonna be using the procedural avionics from now on, but this rocket really didn't need it. This rocket's gonna be a scientific payload, so we're gonna launch it. It's gonna take a much steeper ascent, and that's so that the payload spends as much time out of the atmosphere as possible because it's biological samples and they have to be out of the atmosphere for them to be doing their thing. Here you can see both Florida and Cuba, pretty nice. And we're just gonna warp down to re-entry. Here we go, using the parachutes as heat shields. Oh, okay, it, it looked like that was just the service module and that service module, that outer shell, I, I knew it might break so I designed it where if it did break it didn't destroy everything and we're just gonna splash down nice and gently in the ocean and here we are all right it looked like we got a lot of science look at that 21 science the first thing I'm gonna do is go to r and I'm gonna spend some of our science on the satellite era science and the next thing I'm gonna save up for is this entry descent and landing because once we're orbital that'll be really important let's go to the VAB real quick this is the new orbital rocket. It's called the Tortoise Launch Vehicle. Get it? Because it's going to be the fastest thing humanity has ever built. The first stage is powered by this massive LR-79. The next middle stage is powered by the AJ-10. In early series AJ-10, this is actually used on like tons of different rockets throughout history. And up top, we've got a little Aero B for the third stage. And then on top, you can see our payload. It's kind of based off Spudnik. That's gonna be our first satellite. But there's a problem. That LR-79 costs 138 grand. The AJ-10, 36 grand. And tooling the rocket will cost an enormous 51 grand. In total, that's $225,000. And we only have 87 right now. To solve this, we're gonna use these two contracts, which pay out an absolutely ridiculous amount of money, both in advance and completion. And so it was time to spend a bunch of the cash. After a long wait, it's time to launch Orbiter 1. I know, no need to applaud me. It's, it's an incredible name. So let's launch it. Here we are on the launch pad, you can see it in all its glory. First thing I'm gonna do is turn on Smart ASS, and I'm gonna actually switch it to surface mode. We're gonna make sure our staging's right, and then we're gonna fire away. Got off the pad a little bit weird, a little janky, kind of tilting but turned out okay. So I'm gonna quickly start pitching over just a little bit. Now, I'm actually gonna let you guys watch this entire launch. It's only gonna be sped up maybe about four or five times. It's not gonna be sped up much more than that. So here we go, we're going above the clouds now. I wanna be pointed to 45 degrees by the time I'm at 20 kilometers. So we're pitching over because we wanna take a low, ang a low ascent profile, of course, by the time we were at 20, 20 kilometers, I was really only at 50 degrees, maybe. Here we go, we're going pretty good. We're about to run out of fuel in the second stage, but we're going really fast now. I'm trying to get my apoaps to a nice altitude, around 200 kilometers. Now, after this stage burns out, there's a really good chance the next stage doesn't ignite. That AJ-10 has a 15% chance of not igniting, so cross your fingers. It worked. All right, we're gonna continue on our way to orbit. Continue burning sideways. 
Now, I'm trying to get my apoapsis high enough because our apoapsis is actually going to become our periapsis. So I'm kind of just fiddling with our pitch. I was actually kind of expecting that AJ-10 to cut out long before this. You know, I expected an engine failure, but everything's looking okay. And we're about to run out of fuel. All right, now I'm gonna turn Smart ASS off because it gets weird with RCS thrusters. And then I'm gonna just warp all the way to Apoaps, or at least until we're getting close to it. I'm gonna turn on RCS. I'm going to reorient the craft so it's pointed directly prograde, flat against the horizon. And then I'm gonna use those RCS thrusters to actually spin it up a little bit to give us a little bit of spin stabilization. So after we are kind of getting spun, we can actually start that arrow B. All right, looks like we're gonna make it. Now this stage is unguided, it's just a science core up there. So that's why it's gotta be spun and it's going great. So I'm gonna switch to the map view in a second. Here we go, and you're gonna get to see us make orbit. There it is. Yes! Hell yeah! Hey, come on, baby! Come on! Yes! Come on! Ah! Yes! Yes! All right, now that we're in orbit, I'm just gonna decouple the satellite. After turning on some science experiments, I'm gonna leave y'all with some beautiful time-lapse footage of Earth. <laughs> 